Alright, and you're back for another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, so today we're looking at my poor homemade power supply, which has really seen better days. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to look at this with all this mess and the thing, so I'm just going to clear up. And we're done in seconds, thanks to the miracle of time-lapse. So, anyway, what's the problem with this homemade power supply? Now, you might be able to see that one of the meters isn't there. Well, that's what I used for the um, VU meter in my Franken PC project. But anyway, the main problem with this is that, well, the negative 24 volts variable output no longer works. I was powering a Slayer Exciter from it. Everything was going just fine. Then all of a sudden, the negative rail shot up to 24 volts and I cannot adjust it. Positive rail still works, and so does the variable 12 volt output. However, no amount of changing the voltage here will actually change the will actually change the negative output. Positive output can still be controlled though. You can go all the way to 24 volts, all the way down to about 1.2 volts. However, this control here is quite hot, which shouldn't happen. And taking a look inside, we have one badly charred resistor. Which I doubt you can actually see, but it's this resistor right here. That I'm pointing to with my pen. But I reckon what's happened here is this voltage regulator has just gone completely shorted. And that's caused those problems. Unfortunately, before I do any kind of testing, I've got to get at least one of these meters working because got two multimeters here, neither of which work. This one only comes on for about a second and goes off again. And this one doesn't come on at all. Right, hopefully I'm getting this in the camera shot. Like I said, doesn't come at all, doesn't come on at all, unless I short out some contacts on the back of the circuit board there, which is where the switch is and now it's on. Now, I want to try the same thing with this meter, see if just poking about with the contacts on the back of the switch makes it turn on. But to do that, I'm going to need a 9 volt power source, because I don't have the battery on this anymore. And since I can still get a variable voltage output with this, I thought well, I might just as well use this as the power source, and we'll see where we go from there. Soldered a couple of wires onto the, where the power comes into this meter. It is connected to my power supply, which is giving a 9 volts output, which is what this runs on. So I will just turn it on, and let's see what happens. Yep, exactly the same thing as it did when it was powered by a battery. As you can see. Turns on for about a second, then goes straight off again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see what happens. If I short the switch at the back, like what I was doing with this meter, and see if it actually stays on for more than, well, what you saw there. First of all, let's just try this with the switch in the off position. Just need to get the wires out of the way, so I don't short out anything. Aha! There we go. Got it to stay on. So you know what, I think the switch on this meter might be faulty as well, because I know the switch on this meter is also faulty, so I think we have a faulty switch on this meter as well. To do that, I can get it to stay on. That's a bit of a bummer. So I think what I'll do is I'll... I'll test this switch and see if it's got a proper continuity. And the only thing I've got to test the continuity with is this meter, so I'll have to do that to this one to get it to turn on. 
But yes, it looks like I can revive this meter and make it work again. So, I've now soldered a switch between the switch contacts on the meter. Hopefully you can see that. I brought a formerly dead meter back to life. Remember that? Well, that's no longer a problem, as long as both of these switches are on. It now lives! Uh, let's see if the range switch works. Well, I'm going to say that's a successful fix. Well, what I am going to do is I'm going to remove this switch from here and just bridge the connections across this switch because I can still switch it on and off like this. Not quite sure where it's getting that um, 1.1 whatever I've got the range switch set to at the moment. So, just bridge that with a wire like you can see here. And, problem solved! It lives again. Now all I've got to do is find the rest of this thing. Right, I think I've got it on the volt scale. I have absolutely no idea, but I'll just put a 9 volt battery across the input terminals. Okay, I think I might have that on the 200 millivolt scale or something, actually. It's just... Now, I don't actually know what scale I've got this thing on. Right. Uh, might have this on. No, nope, there we are, see? We've got minus 8.2 volts. Probably because I've got the battery the wrong way around. Yeah, there we go. I don't know how well you could see the numbers on the meter there, but that is now working again. Just thought I'd better point out that this battery is half dead, so hence the low reading. You know something, it can be absolutely crazy just how simple it is to fix some things. Here we have the other meter. Remember this is the one that still has its case, which I've just taken out of its case for now. And all I've done, if you can see, is put a couple of blobs of solder across the power switch, one there and one there, shorting these two terminals together and these two terminals together. And now, it turns on absolutely fine. It's the same thing I did with the other meter. So I don't know what goes wrong with the power buttons in this, but if you have one of these meters and you find one day stops working, well, you might want to try that and see if it does anything. Right, so now I can tell you more about my busted power supply. Since my meter now works, I'll just put this onto the voltage scale. Now I'll connect one probe to ground. First of all, I'll connect one probe to the positive output rail. And you can see, wow, look at that. Exactly 9 volts. I couldn't have done that better if I tried. Because if you remember, I was using this to power up the other meter. And as I adjust this, you can see, no problem adjusting the voltage. Go all the way from 1 volt to 24.5 volts. But I'm just going to leave it in the middle there. But now when I put it onto the negative voltage rail, as you can probably see, it's stuck right there at about 25 volts. Can't shift it at all. Okay, it does go a little bit, but... No. There is definitely something wrong in there. 
And I think what's happened is the negative voltage regulator has gone shorted. I don't know if I already said that, but that's what I think's happened. It certainly would explain why this control is getting hot and also that resistor burns out. Here is the voltage regulator circuit out of the power supply. This is the negative voltage regulator. And it hasn't shorted out. I'm not saying it still works. But there are no direct shorts in this part whatsoever. Of course, the only direct short we do have is between the case and the middle pin there. But that's normal for a voltage regulator because that's always connected to the middle pin. Anyway, now I've got it out of the power supply, you might be able to check, you might be able to see that that resistor there, if the camera would just focus on it, of course. If I get my thumb out of the way, you can see that it's really gone. I can't even tell what value that used to be. There's an identical one on the other side, which is a brown, red, brown, that would be 120 ohms. I'm just going to put that power supply into retirement and make a brand new power supply. Going to make a variable switching power supply. This is what I'm going to use for the switching power supply. Going to modify that so it has variable voltage. This came out of a mini fridge, provides 12 volts at about 3 amps. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, that's about it for today, but be sure to tune in next time because I'm going to be taking this switch mode power supply and modifying it for variable voltage. So, until next time, goodbye.